Welcome to the Eric Zane Show podcast, the daily show where I discuss news, nonsense, and my personal adventures from right here in the posh, luxurious uh, Impact Power Sports studio. Impact Power Sports, a beacon of um, fun for four-wheelers, ATVs, UTVs, you name it. Uh, going with the hat look because, um, well, there's uh, no product in my hair. And if there's no product in my hair, I find it challenging to not look like a fucking asshole. But I imagine the hat is going to come off at some point. Patrick is here in the chat. Yesterday on the Insane Asylum radio show, the king of all poverty media, EZ, he requested uh, Huey Lewis and the News. And I like Huey Lewis in the news. It was the song Hip to be Square. And I don't know if he ripped it off of uh, Wikipedia or something like that. But he gave me like uh, some factoids about the song Hip to be Square. Various like uh, how, why the song was made, what it's all about. And I was going to play it. I, I really was going to. I, I don't want you to think that I ignored you. Uh, but the day kind of got away from me. So I'll have to make that up to you. Bob in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania writes, Ah, it's take your dog to work day here too. Yeah. Um, for the first time ever, Darla was introduced to the audience on Q100. With uh, some incessant barking during one of my segments, and I was afraid of that. She was kind of wound up earlier in the day and was having a temper tantrum. And uh, so it happened. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit more weird when you're when you're when you're doing that because, you know, um, if anybody calls and asks me, I had one guy call and ask me on the insane asylum said, "Hey, where are you? Where are you?" And I said, "Uh." I'm in the studio. Yeah, where's your studio? And I said, well, uh, he goes, are you in, in Grayling? At the, and I go, no, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not. He goes, well, where are you? And he says, Los Angeles, Chicago. And actually, that was quite flattering. I said, no, I'm in. I'm uh, outside of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Oh, okay. And so then I gave uh, the guy my, I go, I come up there all the time. I've been uh, going up to uh, Northern Michigan for my whole life. I have a place up there uh, as well as a hot tub. And uh, so I made friends with that guy, but I haven't, I don't like talk about that on the air. Some people get weirded out by that. So when I'm on the air doing the show and Darla starts having a freaking temper tantrum, I can't like act like I know my dog. So the way it came out on the show was, ah, it's take your dog to work day. And, uh, someone's dog is here. I don't even, who brings their dog to work? Someone's dog is, I don't even know the dog's name. Maureen heard that. Uh, I think that's going to be a, uh, a fun component of the insane asylum. You know, everything is gradual there. You can't, um, the idea of me signing on to the insane asylum and like doing long form talk is literally impossible. I have never witnessed a radio station that the music is so embedded with the audience. They are known for that. They do one thing that's particularly important. Well, it's all important, but that one thing, if you were to deviate from that, you know, um, it would be a problem. The music has to be interesting. It doesn't even have to be music that you like. It just has to be interesting. Something that they haven't heard before. Something that keeps their attention. Uh, and it seems to work. It's been more than 10 years now that they've been doing that. Linda points out that the station does have a resident dog, though. That would be Louie. He's also a bulldog. Chris in Buffalo says, I literally logged on, as you said. Uh, we've heard 
Kenny from Nashville has a birthday. That is a long running joke. Yeah, I am doing, I'm hitting all the buttons there. Old school radio, birthday club, uh, temperatures, weather forecast, all that. We got it all covered, man. Um, I also have something that I want to talk with the audience about on Patreon. About uh, something that uh, radio related that I, I, I'm i just I'm just not comfortable in talking about it on the free podcast. Just going to have some sensitive ears and I don't, I just don't want to do that. Um, Diana, as you know, my lovely wife, because of the internet has many, many times been fooled over the years. She's come walking into the room and she goes, Oh, what? Samuel L. Jackson is dead. He is. Yes. Oh my God. I can't believe it. So I grab my phone. I look at notifications, nothing. So then I look it up, nothing. I go, can I see your phone? And, uh, you know, it's from like, uh, a news source that's not a news source. It's it's fucking scam. I go, honey, he's not dead. This is one of those hoaxes. What? Huh? What do you mean? It's written. It's right there. I go, yeah, I know. I know it is. But and this is like 10 years ago. Oh, Sean Connery is dead. Is Sean Connery really dead? Is he one of those people that I've forgotten has actually died? Yeah, he's dead. But before he died, long before he died, she's walking. Oh, my God. Sean Connery's dead. And he hadn't died yet. He wasn't even close to dying. Oh, my God. Oh, this is terrible. Ringo Starr is dead. Everybody loves Ringo Starr. Yeah, he's not dead. And then there's um, news stories that happened that she, she witnesses it or it's, it shows up. And then like uh, the other day I'm, I'm laying in bed. She goes, Oh my God. Yeah. I can't believe it happened again. Oh, a second half eaten body was found at Ford field. Now that's where the lions play. I go, second half-eaten body was found at Ford Field. So there was a first body. She goes, yes, this one was found in the air ducts. Half-eaten. Ford Field. I go, so they're finding half-eaten bodies at Ford Field? And this is the second one? I'm thinking. So I, I looked it up, and there's nothing. And I go, honey, that, that's not true. What? Yeah, this is another Samuel L. Jackson is dead hoax. It's not It's not real. There's no half-eaten bodies found at Ford Field. Oh, and she does, isn't getting it. You know, the, the message is stopping at that point. Uh, Chris says she must get her news like that. Uh, like my aunt from Facebook. Exactly. So I'm like, oh my God. Um, no, I go, honey, this is a rule of thumb when it comes to the internet. No matter the news story, when you see it, all that should do is turn the detective on in you. Then you have to look for other sources that have the same damn thing. Like when I saw that Diddy, there was a raid on Diddy's houses. I went, huh? Okay. Maybe. I did, you know, just a couple couple clicks, little simple searchy searchy, and boom. Yes, it's happening. Yeah, there's, there's no, uh, there's nothing like that. 
And then she feels dumb. And I go, ah, don't, don't feel dumb. Just as a rule, don't believe anything online. Just use that when you see it. Don't tell anyone because then you're part of the problem. You're spreading fake news, shit like that. Um, that's part of the whole sequence of events here. Uh, a lot of talk about Big Fraud News Network. I've been getting all my news from Big Fraud News Network. It all seems to check out, takes the guesswork out. Well, yeah, but they've only written about one thing on Big Fraud News, and that's your old pal EZ. So she's just silly and spectacular. In fact, when I looked up half-eaten body Ford Field, uh, they're all like Snopes. And, and no, a half-eaten body was not found at Ford Field. The idea that someone would eat the body and then take the rest of the body and then somehow manage to get it inside of Ford Field, not just inside of Ford Field, but into the air ducts of Ford Field. Molly, who owes me an email, says, what station is Big Fraud News Network, LMAO? Yeah, it's a limited publication right now. There's only 479 people who are able to see the articles uh, on my um, on my subreddit. And even that, it's probably only like seven or eight people on the big fraud or on the uh, subreddit who actually look at it from time to time. Uh, Ashley is here. She says the lions are eating people. That's why I say F zoos. Uh, I don't care for zoos either, only because they make me feel bad. I take it back. I can go as long as I don't start to think too much. If I don't think too much, quit. If I don't, stop. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. It's a, temp- it's a temper tantrum. Give me a second. Sometimes this happens. She just wants some love. Oh. All right. Uh, word on the street is that Stu McAllister was shouting at his dog the other day um, on his podcast. I guess the dog went pot. It's an old dog. And I guess he got frustrated and started yelling at the dog. I guess it was ugly. I had at least one report from someone who said that um, he was yelling so much that it actually got uncomfortable and they had to turn it off. God damn. Kuiper says it was the rant of the year. I feel bad for the dog, though. All right. Okay. That's okay. Now, if you can't, you obviously, some of you are just listening to the podcast. You have to understand that um, I'm actually holding the dog like a baby right now. This is all she wanted. This is what I have to do. All right. Now I'm going to put her down. Oh, she's such a big girl. Just a big, big girl. Okay, I know. You gotta go down. Okay, let's rest. Let's rest now. There we go. Now, where was I? Uh, Kuiper says it was the rant of the year. Linda says I felt so bad for poor Sadie. Tyler says let's review the rant on Patreon. All right. Yeah, we can do that. We can review Stu's rant. But I I don't, uh, you know, with the caveat that it might make me feel bad. Because I just, I think about if he's screaming at the dog, the dog's terrified. 
I should get Stu on here and tell him that it may have um, it may have had some impact. Been a while since we've had Stu on the old show. Hang on, I get get the cell phone hookup. I got a feeling this is not going to work out. Come on. All right. This is what I want you to do. I have reached the phone of Stu McAllister. Please leave your name. Okay. Dear fuckface. Dot, dot, dot. Word on the street is that you were screaming at Sadie on your podcast. Period. Call me back so we can discuss this. Discuss. If anybody knows the timestamp for Stu's rant, we can get to it before the Patreon. Uh, Ryan says Patreon is going to be lit. Embargoed radio story and dog yelling. Let's see here. I think there's a potential meetup between audience members. Bulls on parade says, Kenny, we can meet up on Broadway Saturday night. I'll buy you a drink for your birthday. Kenny writes, (laughs) I haven't been down there in over 20 years. What? What? All right, Linda, if you can come up with the timestamp, I don't have it, and and let me know. Um, we can get to it. L M N O podcast. Stu's big rant about his dog taking a leak inside of the house. I have a feeling I can, I'm looking at like the uh, waveform. I might be able to figure it out, but I think I just got the information here. Uh, Okay. Let's see. Oh, Jesus. It might take me a second. Mm -hmm. L-M-N-O podcast. Mm -hmm. Latest episode. This is how he starts his show. <laughs> hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. It's me. Yep. Oh, hang on a second. This is Stu. Hey. Hey, Stu. What's happening? Word on the street is that uh, you flipped out on your dog. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm getting ready to listen to it. I'm going to open up. Oh Jesus! I'm going to listen to it on my show. Oh God! Do I have to be here for no, it? No, no, no. I just uh, there was some uh, some folks were concerned because they were worried about the dog. They were afraid that oh. you. Yeah, rightfully they should. I murdered my dog. She's oh. dead. She's dead now. You know, you guys don't have to worry about her. She's dead. Okay, so the dog is in no pain or fear or anything because the dog <laughs> actually has died. The dog is dead. I killed okay. it. Okay, all right. So how many dogs <laughs> remain in the house? Oh, I still got the two. I still got Sadie and I still got a uh, wean dog. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, so that's that's it. People just, I just had one person reach out and said, I, I had to stop listening. But I've got, <laughs> I've seen at least two people that said it was fantastic. Uh, well, she, she, uh, she's old. She's like 15. And she has a tendency to go to the bathroom in the house without warning. And yeah. uh, I was, I was doing the podcast and then all of a sudden she just, squats and just pees and she's looking at me in the eye as she's doing oh, it. Oh, <laughs> no. Okay. Total defiance. So, yeah, I lost my goddamn mind. Okay. I'll be the first to admit to it. So Was it like it, so it was like in the middle of the show so then you had to have, you, you lost your shit and then you had to finish yeah. the show? 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't stop. I don't stop, dude. I don't stop. Oh, I don't I know, edit. But I, I meant, don't do anything. I meant you doing that. Do you, yeah. was, was it hard to finish the show after that much rage? Yeah, I forgot what I was talking about. It yeah. took me a moment to figure out. It's so what fucked I was up. Talking. I know it. I know it. Oh my god. <laughs> All right. It was a long day too. I was a 14 hour day at work and I was with the dog scheme with me and everything. Everything was fine. And then I'm doing the podcast 10, 15 minutes and she's just pissing right there, right there in front of me, right there in front of me. Oh, so yeah. Oh good my times, God. So. Yeah. 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 Uh, so you go, you go listen to it and call me back if you want. I got to go do some work. All right. Enjoy the day. Right. Thank oh, you. Shit. Yeah. See you, See you, you man. Goodbye. Yeah. There you go. All right. That's Stu's take. It's me, your boy. It's me, your boy. It's me, your boy. Steve, or Steve, uh, Stu's having fun with the old effects. It's me, your boy. It's me, your boy. It's me, it's me, it's me, your boy. It's me, it's me, it's me, your boy. It's me, it's me, your boy. Your boy. Your boy. It's me. It's me, it's me, it's me, it's me, Sadie Dog is in the cage. The door's open. She can come and go as she wants. Uh, oh, I see Cow Cat. Cow, what are you doing? All right, so let's uh, bounce ahead to 18 and a half minutes. Um, Ashley says, not annoying at all. All right, you're on the list. I'm going to sit your ass down for that one. I T C H. Here I am having fun. And there you are. Enjoy your 10 minutes, you skank. Uh, Ryan writes local man achieves peak loneliness, spends Wednesday playing with sound effects on podcasts. Cole says, enough of this. Bring back Devil Fart Mike. All right, Cole's going to sit down too. The worst thing to do is to tell me to stop. We got two hours together. You're not the goddamn boss. I am the CEO. Everyone can fuck off. If they start to tell me what I'm supposed to do, you can suck my Yankee dick when I'm shitting. If anyone tries to tell me what the fuck to do on this show. Or you, you need to have a case manager or a guardian or some somebody needs to be making choices. Just fucking Jesus sitting here. Choices for you. Okay, here we go. Because you clearly are making bad choices. Like there were just so, so many things about this woman that you were just like fucking hell, right? 
So, oh my God, God damn it, Sadie dog. No, Sadie, fucking hell. She's just sitting there taking a goddamn fucking piss. She's staring at me right in the fucking eyes. Why, Sadie dog? Fucking goddamn. If anyone lo- would like to fucking take an old fucking dog, Aww. just fucking come and goddamn get her because she is what's known as a huge piece of shit. Fuck it. God fucking damn this fucking fucking piece of fuck dog. Jesus. God fucking damn her. Get in the fucking cage. Get in the oh, goddamn God. fucking cage. Get in the motherfucking cage, oh. you fucking shitbag fuck. Oh, okay. God fucking damn her. I can't. That's not funny. That, that, that's not funny. Why do, why do you people laugh at that? That is not funny. I, I'm sorry. That's That's horrible. I can't, I can't process that. That does not compute in my brain. All I picture, picture is really old dog, uh, being, you know, screamed at like that. Linda says, that's where I turned it off. Fucker. Yeah, that, that's not funny. I, I don't like that. Not a satisfied customer. Let me get him back on. He said he's got to do some work. All right. Oh yeah, I feel bad when that happens. Hey, this isn't a nine. Do something else that I like. Yeah, I'm a fucking idiot. Yeah, do what I like. Stop doing stuff that you think is fun. Do stuff that I like to do. Fucking, I hate you. I love. Shut the fuck up. Uh, Ryan says, Eric, there are at least four audience members here telling you what to do. This is insanity. Yeah, but it's different. I don't mind so much. It's the approach. If someone says this isn't annoying at all, like big mouth fucking brunette bimbo uh, fucking basement dweller hag does, that pisses me off. So you shut the fuck up too, Ryan. In fact, Ryan needs to sit his ass down too. Ryan's going to get 10 minutes for that. I know what the fuck you're doing. Now I'm in a bad mood. If it all started with that hag saying, "Eh, this isn't annoying at all. Shut the fuck up. Tyler says, I would like to point out mine was a joke instead of actually telling him what to do. Oh, no. You're fine. You're fine. I can tell just by approach uh, who's up to no good. And she was absolutely up to no good. And uh, I don't care for that. So those, you you must be punished. I will will dole out that punishment. Yeah, I'm not down with Stu yelling at the goddamn dog like that. I got my crew over here. Darla's just looking at me. You see how I got her to calm down? You got to love the dog. Love the dog. You can't just scream at the dog. If you have a dog, all right, and the dog, um, Kenny says, give me 602. I feel left out. Yeah, shut up. Uh, it, if you have a dog that's that old, I mean, what do you expect? That's going to happen. You have to prepare yourself for that. I mean, let's be honest here. Stu's place is not like the goddamn Taj Mahal to begin with. It already smells like despair and poverty. Who gives a fuck if the dog pees? 
The house will smell better with stale dog piss in that house than with his essence. So I'm not buying that. Uh, Maureen says that if Stu was one of my outreach owners, I would kick his ass. Yeah, that is a bad dog owner to abuse that animal. What a horrible human being. So there's several people that are on the list right now. Uh, Ashley is on the list. Cole is on the list. Ryan is on the list. Uh, Stu, though, is at the top of the list. Kuiper says, bullshit, that was a great rant. Y'all are soft as shit. Well, you stupid fucking uh, bull-cutted cock. There, there was the receiving end of that rant. A, a pet that doesn't know better, you stupid dick. How come I'm the one explaining this shit to you morons? Kuipers, sit your fucking ass down. 10 minutes for you too. I'm in a goddamn bad mood now. I'll just yell at you fucks. And just like Stu, if you, if you think it's okay for Stu to treat his dog that way, well then I'm going to treat you that way. You dirty fucks. Holy fuck. Tyler says, probably Stu, quote, God damn it, Grandma, why aren't you wearing your fucking Depends? Get in your cage. I feel so bad for that dog. I want to stop the podcast and uh, go back over to Stu's house, break in, and take the dog. You're supposed to protect the dog. You are the owner of the dog. When you own a dog, you understand that this is eventually going to be the way it is. Here we are on the eve of uh, Daisy's passing. Tomorrow, one year since Daisy passed, and we've got Stu. You know what's going to happen, you dumb fuck? Uh, That day is going to come when that dog is going to pass away, and you're going to remember what you did, and you're going to feel like fucking shit. That's, that's the truth. So you can't ever do that to your dog because that'll wreck you. You got to look out for yourself too. Poor dog. Stu's the, Stu's the worst. Stu is an asshole of the day candidate. Um, in fact, if it weren't, okay, if it weren't for Stu, it would be Ashley. For that insolence. Nikki says his rant made me see that now I'm giving and now I'm giving my getting old boy cuddles. Jimmy writes, this is all making me sad. Yeah, it makes me sad too. I don't like it. I don't like it. Uh, Jimmy's just mad that I'm mad at Ashley because he's in love with Ashley. She deserved that. Linda says, I just deleted his stupid podcast from my feed. Whose idea was it to listen to that? Fuck that person. It was probably you. That means you get 10 minutes too, Tyler. You know, it's bad when Tyler's getting 10 minutes. All right. Anyway. If you're watching the show on Facebook, X, and YouTube, it is time for you to leave. I appreciate you being here to check this out, but uh, go about your day or check out the rest of the show on Twitch. Uh, you go to, uh, you download the Twitch app and then just search Eric Zane Live. There it is. You get the rest of the show. Or on your desktop or laptop, twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. The um, audio is available wherever you download shows. Uh, Whether you listen to it because you love it or you hate listening to it, uh, that's totally fine with me. I appreciate that. It all works out in the end. You can get my show audio wherever you download shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all of the rest of them. Just search Eric Zane Show Podcast, and there it is. 
All right. As well, the Patreon. Um, a fun little radio story to tell you on the Patreon today that I, I just don't think it's a great idea to, you know, disseminate or put out there for the world to uh, to hear right right now. But uh, yeah, yeah. Just a, just a little touch of controversy. Just a touch. Waiting to see where this takes me. I'll get to that on the Patreon. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane, where you can sign up for 10 days free. I just had a couple of people signed up the other day. Uh, Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. You can sign up for seven days free. Did I say 10 days free? Seven days free. Um, you have to put in a payment form, but you, you do, and then you cancel it, and you still get the seven days. It's that simple. Coming up on Friday, we have a, or I'm sorry, Saturday, we have a big fraud Saturday with a brand new edition of Who Are These Free Beers? And then the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. Okay. Uh, Linda says, my performance review is at noon. I hope the Patreon starts after 1230. Okay. If not, you'll have to just go back and catch it. Thanks to the folks who are watching, as I said, on Facebook, X, and YouTube. Facebook and Twitch brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. X brought to you by Blue Frost IT. Molly says, geez, I leave and come back, and three people got time, uh, got uh, times out. Put in time out. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the thing. Once I get annoyed, then I get way more sensitive, and then I'm like, okay, uh-huh. All right, is this how it's going to be? Everybody's just going to take liberties with your old pal Easy. Well, I'm not going to take this shit. Um, I might be sensitive because of the beating I took doing the radio show today off of the air. And that will segue nicely into the um, Patreon bonus podcast. I'm looking forward to uh, sharing that with you. Uh, update on that bridge that collapsed. Just little morsels of information, tidbits, of you, if you will, of this horrible, horrible incident. Um, I guess the ship, the container ship, lost its ability to steer. And as it was approaching the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore... The captain radioed, mayday, mayday, we have, we cannot steer. So they killed the motors and they're just, you know, moving slowly. But like you all schooled me about yesterday, uh, that doesn't matter uh, because such a gigantic vessel with so much weight that it's not going to take much for it to rip that bridge down like a toy. And boy, did it. Uh, I was reading from one engineering expert who said, yeah, there's, there's no bridge that could have survived that. It's inevitable. If something's going to hit at that key point, it's coming down. I guess the captain was like mayday, mayday, mayday. Um, for a short interval of time from that point to the collision, the people who are like bridge authority were able to get as much of the traffic off as possible. Had that not happened, there would have been a lot more traffic on the bridge. They were like waiting at the bridge. It like stopped everybody. And then they're watching the, the ship come in. Oh my God, get over to the other side. Fucking shit. Well, um, everyone that was in a car that happened to go into the water survived. There were six people that died and they were the guys who were on the bridge filling potholes. The overnight crew, overnight road construction crew, you know, you got to get over and they got the shovel and they put the shit on there and they repair the asphalt or whatever, the concrete. They were there working. A couple of them were on break, just like sitting on the back of the truck, having a, having a cup of coffee or something like that. And motherfucker, um, one of them was plucked out. One or two was plucked out. Turns out, uh, it was some of our greatest Americans, Mexicans, 
Mexico. It was a bunch of Hondurans, Mexicans, and Guatemalans. It looked like one of our paintball events at TC Paintball, except they were working. Uh, these are the. This is what I'm talking about. These are the people who come to America and do the goddamn jobs that the honkies don't want to do and won't do. And then they work their asses off and uh, trying to help their families. That's what these six are described as. Uh, Literally, it was uh, a dude from Guatemala, a dude from Honduras, uh, dudes from Mexico. Really, really sad. And uh, you know how it's going to go because we're at a spot right now in our culture where um, the right wingers have taken aim at transgender people, gay people, and Mexicans, Guatemalans, Hondurans. Anytime there's a horrible crime, like we just had one here in Grand Rapids, where there was a person shot. Uh, a boyfriend killed a girlfriend and the guy who shot the girlfriend it was a domestic dispute happened to be an undocumented, uh, what do you call it? Immigrant, whatever, illegal. Oh my God. And that's just, it's just war. See, this is what happens when we let those savages into our country. And it like builds on this rhetoric of, of hate and divisiveness because some asshole shot his significant other. It has to do with a domestic dispute, not with the fact that he's an illegal. It's fucking unbelievable. So you know that when this story broke that six people died and they were all immigrants. I have no idea if they were documented or undocumented. It does not matter. But I can guarantee you that if they are undocumented people, you're going to get people who are saying, yeah, that's karma. That's because they invaded America. They deserved what they got. You're going to hear that because the six people that were on the bridge were from Guatemala, Honduras, and uh, Mexico. That's the way Ernie used to say it, Honduras. Uh, This is uh, one of the guys. May he rest in peace. His name is uh, Miguel Luna. One of the workers who tragically lost his life, his wife uh, told Telemundo. Luna, Luna, Mr. Luna was married with six children. Here he is with Papa. Uh, no, this is another worker. This his name is uh, Menor Suazo. He's thirty-seven. He came to the United States from Honduras in '03. Terribly sad. Terribly sad. It would be less sad if it was right-wing MAGA people on the bridge. Then it, I would be like, oh, like, I'm not going to lie to you. If if they said, okay, uh, yeah, six people are dead. They were working on the construction, uh, on the, on the bridge doing construction, and they were all wearing uh, Ottawa Impact shirts with MAGA hats. I'd be like, fuck yes. Yes! Bravo! Give the ship's captain a raise. Reward him. Rich says the bridge is a cover-up for the Puff Daddy sex trafficking. I don't think so. There's not much cover-up going on there. Everyone's well aware of what uh, of, of that one. There is no, there is no cover-up. Ryan writes, it's never a good sign if myself and Tyler are getting timeouts. I'm sorry, big fraud. I've learned my lesson. Is the basement dweller still here? Did she storm off in a brunette huff? Dad, the fucking zady, fucking bad me. Fuck him. Dad, go kick his ass. Dad, can you drive me to McDonald's? (laughs) I fucking love you. God, I fucking hate your guts. Fuck off, Dad. (laughs) 
You are an audience member. Shut the fuck up. Tyler says, I'll have you know I choked on an ice cube when I was placed in timeout. So thanks for that. All right. Glad I got that out of my system. Occasionally, you got to kick ass. You know? You got to just kick some ass. And that's what that was. I think I have more on that uh, on that Diddy thing. Uh, he was at a on his private jet getting ready to take off from an executive airport when they the federal authorities stopped the jet and said, "Get off, we got to have a word." And from what I'm understanding, this has been a long time coming. Uh, there's an article with various um, um, eyewitnesses who are saying that someone is trying to take him down. Article reads, it could be over for Diddy and his seemingly bulletproof billion dollar empire. He has a very quote. He has a very questionable past that he's been able to control because of his power for a very long time. Said Derek Parker, who is the, who is the detective in NYPD's rap intelligence unit, AKA hip hop cops. You know, it's bad if a form of music has its own uh, branch of the police to investigate. Now, this is not a New York investigation. This is a federal investigation. But this guy knows a thing or two about looking into this type of potential crime and the lifestyle involved. Uh, This guy says, it looks to me like someone is behind this, someone who really wants to destroy his brand and take him down. Parker was referring to the Homeland Security agent swarming Diddy's homes in Los Angeles and Maui in a coordinated hit. Uh, sex trafficking allegations. Meanwhile, a day's looking Combs was seen at the Miami uh, Opalaka Executive Airport Monday afternoon after his private jet was stopped by feds on the tarmac, apparently bound for a Caribbean spring break with some of his seven kids. At the same time, the entrepreneur's alleged drug mule, Brendan Paul, was arrested on suspicion of cocaine and marijuana possession in Miami. So all these things happen at once. This is fantastic. It almost it all happened almost one day to the month since Rodney Lil Rod Jones, a former producer and videographer for Diddy, filed an explosive lawsuit claiming Diddy repeatedly sexual assault, sexually assaulted him from September of 22 to November of 23. Lil Rod accused Combs of groping his genitals and grooming him into having sex. So you're saying you were convinced to have sex with Diddy? I've often wondered how that could possibly be because who in their right mind can be convinced to have sex with anyone like that? I mean, I don't know. Maybe he's gay. Maybe he's not gay. Either way, you either, you want it or you don't unless it's, unless if you're forcibly raped or if there's an adult and a child involved, like if I'm sitting right in here and Kenny comes in here and he tries to groom me into having sex with him and like suck his dick. Uh, there is no way, there's no money in the world. There's nothing that could be done to get me to put my mouth on uh, Kenny's ding dong. Okay. I, it's impossible. Diddy's attorney said Lil Rod is nothing more than a liar who filed the $30 million lawsuit shamelessly looking for an undeserved payday. You know, I think you got to look into all those things. You know, at this point, um, it's innocent and proven until proven guilty. However, there are a lot of things that are lining up that are very suspicious. After news of the raid broke and interviews resurfaced online, some showing Usher... Most recently, you saw him at the Super Bowl halftime show. 
He was only 13 when he was sent to Diddy's Puffy Flavor Camp at uh, Diddy's house. Usher told Howard Stern in 2016 that he had seen, quote, very curious things taking place at the camp and that he would never send a child of his somewhere like that. It was pretty wild. It was crazy. There were very curious things taking place, and I didn't necessarily understand it, Usher told Stern. I think Howard Howard must have lost his fastball by then because uh, in the past, Howard would have easily been able to coax that out of Usher as to finding out exactly what happened. In a 04 interview with Rolling Stone, Usher recalled how Diddy introduced him to a totally different set of... And they they bleep it out. I don't know what they're trying to say. Something sex, specifically. Um, so this, uh, boy, this is, this is something. And then there was a comment. Uh, someone has given the Fed sensitive information. Someone has cooperated, and it's probably someone very close to Diddy, said this former detective. This, to me, looks like the tip of the iceberg. This unprecedented ambush um, doesn't happen unless if the feds have something very, very serious for them to execute a warrant about. I mean, you can't just say something and then the feds show up. You have to have a lot of conversations. There has to be full on proof. And then not only in one location, but this is a coordinated takedown, a raid, if you will, airplane drug mule, two homes, a billionaire talent who is being pulled off his plane to being, in, uh, to being informed that he's being looked at by the feds right now. A raid is taking place right now. This is, this is huge. I can't wait to see where this goes. Bob says, quote, I'm not gay, but 20 bucks is 20 bucks. Stevie says, Kenny says, dude, what the fuck? Well, you were just in my brain. I mean, maybe I want to have sex with you. I don't know. Chris says, groomed as an adult? Yeah, I didn't, isn't grooming set up for kids? Rebecca says, maybe brainwashed? Sumo snack uh-huh. says, Coke and private jets to the Caribbean maybe help with the grooming? I don't know. Who are you? I don't trust you, but welcome. Just because I don't know you. I have to know you. I don't know. I I like to know everybody here, and I don't know you, but welcome. Dude, what the fuck? (coughs) Kenny. Stevie says, poor Kenny. Ryan says, not even 10 million. Come on. Every man has a price. Yeah, I don't know, man. What if he had a touch of the tism, little Rod? Then he could coax him into the sex. True. Sumo Snack says, I'm new and I hate it here. But your voice sounds like honey. Well, that's something. Thank you. There's plenty to like. I don't understand what there is to hate. Uh, What could you possibly hate? It's a normal conversation. And you like my voice. Is it what I'm saying? Is it you do not like what I'm saying? I need to know specifics about you. Chris says it's Eric Chris. Yeah. Chris from Buffalo says this has to be Ashley's burner account. Okay. Okay. I wish there was a way I could check like location so that you click on it and it says dad's basement. All right. I have got to get to these sponsors. I'm already one hour into this. I was supposed to call my dad. In fact, let me get to my dad. I told him 11. It's time for dear meathead. Got a lot of people call the radio show. If you have questions for dad on Dear Meat, I definitely need them. Hello. Hello, Ruby. 
Hey, where you been, buddy? I know. I'm so sorry. I was late. Yeah, what happened? Is over overslip? Well, we do it. We do it at eleven now. Um, we uh, we we change the time. From now on. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Because we did it last week at eleven because it was the start of my new radio show, which which you knew about. And then, uh, yeah, uh, so that's that's what we're doing, 11 o'clock, if that's okay. Oh, uh, I thought it was just that one time. Okay. Well, if that's, if that's not okay, we can figure something else out. No, no, it's okay. It's just so I know. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, here we are. We, uh, we meet again. So how are you guys? Good. We're doing good. Okay, yeah, that's good. Uh, we've got an, another uh, edition of Dear Meathead, and uh, I, I just wanted to get your take on a few things. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. What's up, Dad? All right. <laughs> is the phone is the phone acting up on you or something? I don't know. It's kind of faded. Uh, mm-hmm. I hear you fadedly. You hear me fadedly, so it might be kind of messed up. No, I don't think so. No. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. Wait a minute. What? This is to your ear. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Hey. Yeah. Oh, that's, you were holding it upside down, weren't you? <laughs> no, I wasn't. I was oh. holding it right. I was holding it to his ear. I wasn't holding it to my ear. Oh, okay. Yeah. That you got to get close to your ear. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You got it. it. You got it. It did happen. Hey, what did you think about Donald Trump uh, selling the uh, Donald Trump Bible? What? Are you serious? Yeah. He's on TV saying, buy the Donald Trump Bible. He, uh, Yeah, he's on TV and he's got the Bible. And now I, I don't know about you, but I don't think Donald Trump's ever been in a church. I don't think he knew what a Bible was. Yeah, he's, he's telling everybody to buy the Donald Trump Bible. Uh, I, I thought he had like this, uh, some kind of a sex. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know. I mean, people can change their tune. I realize that, but I thought to me, uh, it, that seems silly to me. Donald Trump selling a Bible? Yeah, of all things. Is he yeah. that desperate? I don't know what he's doing because I think he's got a pretty good chance of winning again. Um, so I don't know why why he would bother, but I think he's trying to. Um, connect with the religious base and trying to make money to pay off his debt yeah yeah i know it he's got he owes a bunch of cash 495 million dollars what what's this all this what kind how did he get a debt like that joanne wasn't it something legal like he uh this is uh this fine he was fined Yes, and they're going to take his property if he don't come up with it. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, well, yeah. Pray, let's pray a lot now. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to find Jesus. I tell you what. <laughs> he, he, found, he found Jesus. I tell you, $495 million, I mean, I get I, I lose my mind when I, when I lose five bucks. Can you imagine? Yeah. Wait a minute. How did he end up earning that much money? It's fine, bro. I think. Oh, fine. Yeah, he got in trouble with uh, with in in the legal system. Something to do with that. Oh, well. Yeah. Property away from him. Oh my God. Yes. There's no atheists in the foxhole. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear what Joanne said? No. What'd she say? There's no atheists in the south in, south hill. In the fox. In the foxhole. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, well. Yeah, so I wanted to run that by you. The uh, the old Donald Trump Bible. You know who we should get that for is Tom. Tom Alexander. Get him the Trump Bible. He'd love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he'll fix it up all right. For the audience yeah, who you don't know, a friend of the family, Tom, is a big Donald Trump fan. But I don't know if he believes in God. So uh, that that maybe that'll get him to believe in God, the Trump Bible. I don't think so. He's trying to do anything he can to weasel out of it. The Trump Bible probably says Trump is God. Yes. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, my gosh. That's unbelievable. Hey, did you see the story about that bridge falling? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Man, that is a huge thing. Yes, yes. That was incredible. That six people passed. There, there was a crew on the on the bridge working. Oh, my yeah. God. Any of them dead? Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, six people. <laughs> Six people passed away. Those guys, they went down into the river, and they, they never found them. Oh, my God. Yes, yes. It's really, really sad. But uh, that was that was quite a sight. It is sad. I mean, the poor families of those guys. Dad, uh, Matt reaches out, and he has a question. And he says, uh, Meathead, uh, I want to talk gardening. I know you know a thing or two about gardening. Uh, well. You know, you've had many gardens. Uh, what what is uh, what are good things to grow in the garden, Dad? I should I should uh, corn is your favorite. Uh, put your back uh, to Joanne. What is no, it? Oh no, I said corn is your favorite. Corn? Yeah. Yeah. Corn. You had you got corn, and then you there was also something else that you would pick quite a bit in the garden. Do you do you recall? What is it? String beans, tomatoes. String beans and tomatoes. Yes. Onions. Onions. Squash. That's all in one garden? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. We have beets, too. Oh, my God. Oh, so, oh, is uh, it? Here you go. Potatoes. Oh. Now, Dad, even potatoes. Dad, this has got to happen again. I know you're always looking for something to do in the yard. Uh, are you considering planting the garden again this year? No. Really? We- Take care. Of yeah. <laughs> if I do, I can do it, and then Joanne has to take care of it. And I don't think we she cares to do that. Well, I thought you loved to go out there and kind of pull weeds and 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 do stuff like that. I thought that was your thing. That was history. No, you're just gonna sit around and look at the leaves. Don't even do that. All right. Uh, JT writes, "Dear me, Dad, I will soon be celebrating 19 years of marriage to my wife." Uh, okay. And he's got some thoughts about what the secret has been for being uh, to staying happily married. Uh, but he wants to know, uh, what do you think is a, is one of the key secrets to having a wonderful relationship like yours with Joanne? I don't really know what to say to explain that, but I love this woman to the core. I mean, she she sits by me, uh, walks by me, shops by me, with me. She shops. I mean, she shops by you, huh? With me. Yeah. So when you go to we the do. store to- together. <clears throat> okay, so you never leave her side. <laughs> no, I really don't. Well, we have two chairs. We each own one of them. <laughs> you have two chairs. You each own one of them. Yeah, we sit next to because it's next to each other. Now, what if she sits in your chair? <laughs> Nothing. I don't know. It don't matter. But as long as we're next to each other, we're doing fine. Is there anything she does that bothers you? I have never thought about a minute that bothered me. Maybe for a second, but then you forget about it. No. Uh, it, I'm just yeah it just I'm, it leave it it's not important it's 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 not important so what's important is that she's right by me here all right she can get up and go out there and get tea or coffee or something my ass off. <laughs> and, then she, and she cleans the house and all that and i said watch her <laughs> hey do you help her clean the house or anything dad maybe get on your hands and knees and scrub the floor no, that'd be nice. I don't do that. Oh, you got to. You can do that. I mean, I know you you don't like walking that much, but get on your hands and knees and scrub that but thing. It's nice carpeting. It's not dirty. It don't re- don't require any work. I don't know. I think she should put you to work. But she does a lot of cleaning. All right. And yard. And yard work. Uh, let's see. Tyler writes: True love equals you each own your own chair. Yeah, we do. Yeah, I got a chair of my own, and right alongside of me, she's got her chair. That's just funny. <laughs> That's a pretty good analogy. 
Dad, I have an audience member who's 38 years old and still lives in her dad's basement. What advice do you have her to get to get on with her life? I think you got to get on get off his ass and start doing something. Maybe. maybe. He's got to take the responsibility. Uh, uh-huh. So. You know, he's got to clean the house or clean the yard or clean something. So if you have a person that's 38 living in mom and dad's basement, they, they should have to do chores to, to pay their own keep. I think, I think the parents have to sell the house and move out. Just say, all right, you're out. We're going to work. Let him, let him go find a place to live. <laughs> with no basement. <laughs> with, with no basement. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's all good. Uh, any, any final thoughts from you two lovebirds? <laughs> hey, listen. It, it, nowadays, it's difficult for me to think about thoughts. We don't think of final anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't want to think about, about, about final. I sure hope that uh, I'm sure everyone here can agree that um, when we uh, get into our late 80s and early 90s, uh, we have as much joy in our hearts as you two do. Uh, that's nice. Hey, thank you. Okay, as every as usual, everybody loves you guys, and uh, have a great day. Thank you again for the time. And thank you for you thinking about us, sweetheart. I love you dearly. We love you too. I love you too, both of you. And remember, I love you too, Eric. Thank you, darling. And uh, it's always important to remember that you have two chairs and you each own one. You betcha. You betcha. Okay. And now, I, if the weather is good, I should go out there and start checking out the yard. See, I mean, yard. This yard is a acre. I know. Two it's a two acres. acres. It's a big, big yard. Oh my god. All right. Hey, and don't forget. Did you hear somebody won the lottery last night? No, I didn't hear nothing about it. One point two billion. Did somebody win it? Yeah. Bibles. Go by. Uh, yeah. Give it to give Joanne. it to Trump. Give it to Trump. Jesus. Trump Bibles. All right, guys. I love you. All right. Love you too. Love you, okay. Bye bye. Bye. See ya. There you go. Another amazing edition of Dear Meathead. Our new audience member, Sumo Snack. Right. Okay, I take it back. Your parents are awesome. I like it here now. These two are great. Uh, rave reviews for this latest edition of Dear Meathead. Sumo, a little background. Before I did this, I did. Uh, I was on the radio, and my dad's been joining me for, oh, God. I think 2016 is when we started having him regularly. Um, on the radio. And then later, once I started podcasting, so eight years or so, hundreds and hundreds of episodes of dear meathead. And that is my beloved, excuse me, stepmother. My dad got remarried for the third time in 1981. I believe. See, Paul is here. He says, best, best edition in a while. Love them. Um, and hey, thanks for signing up, Paul. I know you just upgraded to tier two on Patreon for a year. It's fucking great. Um, so thank you. Sumo says hip pain. Uh, no, I guess I'm standing up doing like a stretch. It's uh, to avoid it. It's kind of like just given uh, I sit all goddamn day and uh, pull back the curtain. I have been in pain. In fact, I'm in a conversation with my um, urologist. Uh, I just had that appointment on Friday about my prostate. And um, unbelievably, on Sunday, this is so strange, my goddamn ball started hurting. Okay? So the day started out. I showed Diana my moves. I had to, I was able to show off her my my new moves and uh that it all it went down. It was like great. 
And uh, as you know, I'm having all sorts of uh, changes in my body because of this medicine I'm taking from my prostate gland. And I don't know if those changes cause the next problem to have, but guys will know this. The feeling of when you're blue bulb, that's what I felt like on the back half of the day yesterday or on Sunday. I was like, God damn it. What happened here? What is going on? Really uncomfortable. And then went to bed, woke up Monday and by the middle of the day, it was back intense. Like I got kicked in the balls. That's how bad it hurt. What the fuck is going on here? Um, wake up Tuesday. It's gone. Pain is gone. By late day, it's back. Worse than ever. Like, God damn it. So I reach out to my doctor. This is so ridiculous. I, it's good that I tell you about these things because I'm not, I'm not too embarrassed when I tell them. I said, yeah, my testicles hurt like fuck. I don't know what to tell you. So she just got back to me. She goes, okay, is it one side or both? And I'm like, both. And it only starts hurting late in the day. Like right now I'm okay. So something's going on and I'm keeping a close, uh, I'm being, I'm very aware of it. It still feels like there's something wrong, but the pain isn't too intense right now. And I'm just scared to death that like my testicles have been replaced uh, by cancer so that I don't even have balls anymore. I just have where there were balls is just cancer balls. And my bladder has a giant fucking cancer tumor in there. That's, that's just what's freaking me out. So I, as you know, I don't fuck around with this. So I'm waiting to, uh, well, they probably already contacted me. I just don't want to mess with it right now because I'm in the middle of doing this thing, but God damn, I'm worried. And so, uh, Diana, like, you got to call. I am calling. I'm all about it. Stevie says, easy is very aware of his nuts. Wow. Well, a lot can go wrong there. You hear about people getting testicular cancer all the time. And I, that's always what I think. Uh, Patrick says, tight pants will do that sometimes. Saying, Yeah, I know. I don't wear tight pants. I just wear sweats all the time. Uh, Tyler says, I too have ball pain and a toddler who likes to headbutt me right in the sack. It's the worst. <laughs> God. Molly says, I hope you'll be okay. I do too. Stay tuned for the great ball extravaganza. All right. I cannot wait to tell you about this interaction I had with dude um, during the radio show today. Let's put it this way. The ghetto side of me wanted to react a certain way. You know how I am in this show. If you annoy me, it's you're going to hear it. I was so goddamn annoyed, I couldn't believe it. But this is not my field, nor is it my ball. It's nothing. I'm low man in the totem pole, so I'm just like, So goddamn annoyed. Anyway, thank you to King's Room Barbershop. Three locations, Caledonia, Northland Drive, and at 821 36th Street, Wyoming, next to the costume room. I need to go see those folks. The multi-talented duo of Andy and Colleen, husband and wife. By the way, I'm really sorry that uh, Darla and Bruce are not. They're like off to the side. You can't see them. O'Neal's on the floor. Sorry, guys. King's Room Barbershop. Go get your hair cut there if you're in West Michigan. Uh, that's where you go to get your hair cut. Quick question for our new friend, Sumo Snack. Please tell us where you are from in the world. We'd like to know where people are from here. We'd like to get to know people, you know? Kuypers says he's going to go to the King's Room Barbershop on Saturday and get his bull cut. Chris says, I need a haircut Friday. Where is Andy going to be Friday? Glad you asked that. All you have to do is go to kingsroom.net and it will tell you on the schedules. Sumo Snack making her or his presence felt. I don't know if it's a male or a female or maybe whatever. You never know these days. 
originally from Kansas City, but been living in Japan for the last eight years. Male. Welcome. So you must be a Chiefs fan if you're from Kansas City. You're the new Patriots. Everybody hates you except for the except for the fans. Goddamn Chiefs. How the hell do you wind up in Japan anyway? Did you ever look up? I was reading uh, uh, Cora had an interesting story about World War II atrocities. And everybody talks about the atrocities by the Nazis. During World War II, and I didn't know about this, the Japanese Empire, what they did to the Chinese in World War II, the Nazis would look at it and go, oh my God, what? They're horrible. In Japan, you know, it's kind of like uh, after we shut them the fuck up with the bomb, everybody kind of like forgot about what the hell they did to the Chinese and to the Koreans. Fucking brutal. Way more brutal. I don't even, it's so bad, I don't even want to describe it. Me just describing what they did, the Japanese to the Chinese in World War II, you'd stop listening to the show. You'd be so mortified. It's cool now, though. Anyway. Well, that's cool, though, that you live in Japan. I bet that's exciting, living in a, in a different country like that. Or It's probably not now. You lived there for eight years. All right. Uh, question. Uh, in, in Japan... Everyone is into bukkake, like they invented it. So, um, where are you in the knowledge scale on this devious sex practice? Because that's like normal. In Japan, they have like sex ed. And, you know, the kids uh, learning about like reproductive health. And, okay, this is, uh, you know, this is, uh, you're talking about basic things like, adolescence and the menstrual cycle and reproduction and and then that's like the first five minutes and then they spend the next 55 minutes talking about bukkake which is like really something if you don't know what bukkake is you got to look it up it's i mean you got to go japanese bukkake that's where it's really big time Sumo says, I'm a level six blue belt. It's what I was doing just before catching your stream. I'm confused. Is a level six blue belt? Oh, level six blue belt in Bukaki. I thought that was like a, 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 a martial arts thing. I didn't know they have like uh, different levels of it. Some of you folks are at work. Do not look up level six blue belt bukkake. Uh, now I have something to look up. I mean, I've heard of bukkake. I know what it is. You also live in the land where they pixelate pubic hair on pornos, which I don't understand. But you're an American. So, I mean, this is all you're getting the influence of the culture, but you're bringing uh, the good old USA, uh, to Japan, and then eventually you might uh, come back home and bring Japan to us in a culture swap. All right. That's enough. That is enough, EZ. I was talking about my friends at King's Room Barbershop. I also want to mention the Vouch Store. That is where creators match up with small business to sell you products. I got the pet supply products. I've got the coffee. I've got the camp craft cocktails. Uh, the toothbrush. You can buy all those things. The percussion massager, which is a little bit more of an expensive item. But uh, shop to your heart's content. Check out the stuff on the vouch store. Every uh, what you spend, a little bit of that goes in my pocket. So thank you. Vouch. 
dot store slash Eric Zane. Impact Power Sports online at Impact Power Sports MI.com. ATVs, UTVs, motorcycles, e bikes, Yamaha golf carts, zero turn radius lawnmowers, all at Impact Power Sports in Rockford, Michigan. Check out the selection online at Impact Power Sports MI.com or head to their store on 14 Mile Road in beautiful Rockford, Michigan. Some of these are local sponsors, some are not. Like Tag Accounting, not a local. Well, he's here, but you can take advantage of Tag Accounting from anywhere in the U.S. TagCPA.net. Uh, tax time is looming, getting close. I just made the necessary arrangements to pay my tax bill. Fuck! TagCPA.net. You upload all your documentation, your tax uh, info to the tax hobbit he'll take care of it for you get started with a phone call 616-301-9516 that's 616-301-9516 still time to do it grand rapids gold basketball two games you got one coming up on thursday and on saturday last two games of the year 14 bucks a ticket starting at 14 bucks two dollar beers two dollar dogs on thursday grandrapidsgold.com for tickets and then the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. Here we go. Things are starting to look up in the mortgage industry when it comes to interest rates and what you can get your home for, the interest rate on your home. Uh, if you are anywhere in the U.S., not Japan, you can get a mortgage. Reach out to Mario today at 231-332-6505. That's 231-332-6505 today for the Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. For our pal Sumo Snack. If you could, we'd like to expand the audience to Japan on uh, an even larger basis. As you can see, we have one Japan, uh, audience member in Japan and 34 in the U.S. currently on Twitch. So spread the word amongst your beautiful Japanese brethren uh, in the great country of Japan so we can increase our reach in the land of the rising sun. I really like that, how the world is so much closer now with uh, online content creating like this. It just, it's just a spectacular world that we live in. We live in the future. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, all right. Let's see. We talked about the Baltimore Bridge Collapse. Absolutely uh, horrible. Mention the uh, $1.12 billion Mega Millions jackpot winner. It was someone in New Jersey. Um, if you... I have had this conversation many times about the annuity. Like, let's say you're a 30-year-old guy and you win that and then everybody's like, oh, yeah, I'll just take the lump sum. And so... You get $537.5 million before taxes. So your $1.12 billion that you won is knocked down to $250 million. I don't understand the logic behind that. Or you can get all of the $1.12 billion in 29 annual payments. Of course, that's taxed accordingly. But I'm sure there is a way that that makes sense. I just don't understand how. I have the calculator out. I'm looking at $1 billion, $120 million dollars. Spread out over 30 payments. Um, so, yeah, you get um, the first one right away and then 29 more. So let's just divide $1,120,000,000 by 30. Once a year, you would get a paycheck for $37,333,333.33. Three hundred and sixty four days later, even if you spent five million, 
you get another $37 million to add to what you had. Think about that. Now, I understand you're taxed on that too. But there are so many different things you can do to save your money. Like if you take all of that and invest it appropriately, um, you can reduce your tax risk over time. I wonder if the Gins can help me out with that. He might be able to provide me with an answer. Troy Ginzer. Hmm. That's a fax number. That's weird. Troy. Okay. There we go. I'm curious how this works. He's hilarious, by the way. Very busy this time of year, so I don't know if I'm going to get him. I might get shut out. Hey, accounting. This is Troy. May I help you? Troy, it's Eric Zane on the podcast. How are you? Not too bad. Thanks for asking. I have a one-minute question for you. Got it. Someone okay. just won the $1.12 billion jackpot lottery. Okay. If someone, what would you recommend they do? Lump sum or uh, 30 annual payments of $35 million? Those numbers, it doesn't really matter, but probably lump sum. Why? Lump sum. Because if you do 1.12, you get all of it. Time value. Time value of money. What does that it's mean? Worth, it's, worth, <laughs> it's worth more now than 20 years from now. I don't understand, but I trust but you. But it's, it's, it's a moot point, though, with that those numbers. How come? Because it's just so big? Just so much money. Okay. So either way, <laughs> is there any way you can get that money? And then uh, limit your tax liability, or is it impossible to avoid that? Um, you could donate a lot of it, and you get you could get a large deduction that way. Um, and then, and or start certain businesses. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a customer who came into a lot of money, either through a lottery or a huge? Like, I had um, one, I had one person um, down in Kalamazoo for her birthday. Her coworker got her a ten dollars scratch off, and it was a million dollars. So you you had to take care of the. Uh, I did the re tax return for that year. That's ridiculous. Yeah, you can look for for gambling. You can write off losses up to the gains so you know that you know, i hear all these people oh like um buying people's losing tickets and but i've heard stories where the irs when they do that like if there's footprints on losing tickets from the horse race track uh -huh. they'll, uh -huh. they'll throw it out so have you ever heard of a, a, an accountant who's under 5'9", average over 30 points his senior year of high school? Just one. Just one. one oh. And that would be the tax man, the tax hobbit, yours, Troy Ginsburg. truly. Did you ever, uh, <laughs> yeah. after you drained yet another three... Did you ever like talk trash? Were you were you a trash talker back in the day? Uh, I wasn't because I'd get too hyper and I'd start missing shots, which was rare for me. But if I started talking trash, so that's why like Reggie Miller and Bird, you know, are, are amazing cuz they were better when they talked trash. <laughs> but I was too hyper when I what would do that. What was the uh what is the number of most threes you made in a row during one contest? <laughs> um, eight. You made eight in a row? Mm -hmm. You asshole. <laughs> Did any chick ever have sex with you because you scored so many points? 
No comment. Have you ever humiliated a radio guy when uh, playing basketball by sh- uh, nailing six three pointers in a row? Never. Never. That's a lie. <laughs> All right. Thanks for your time. All right. Carry on. See you, Zane Master. Bye bye. See you, Zane Master. Bye. Yes, see you. See you, Zane Master. <laughs> that little fucker can shoot the shit out of the ball. You wouldn't believe him. He still can shoot the shit out of the ball. He's an old man. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, my God. 30.6 points per game. Per game. Ugh, little fuck. How the hell? Anyway, that's enough about that. Okay, where do we want to go now? (laughs) Oh, this is great. Okay. Former big league pitcher, had a cup of coffee in the majors. His name is uh, Jason Bradford. Not Jason, C-H, Jason Bradford. Uh, Had big dreams. Signed with his, uh, with a team that he was so proud of. The New York Mets. He thought, this is it. I made the bigs. Didn't work out. Not everybody's dream. Sometimes it bursts. Bounces around a couple teams. And uh, I think Jason Bradford finished up his major league career with a couple other teams in 2020. Still a young man. 30s. He's like, well, what do I want to do now? I mean, I made a lot of money, but not that much money. And I got a lot of life left to live. I think I'm going to go into law enforcement. All right. Got an interest in that. And uh, began that process. Um, I believe this was in Nevada. He, they have like the police academy where you go and you... You do cop things and you you learn how to do shit. I couldn't tell you the first thing about being a police officer, but eventually that day comes when uh, all the cadets graduate from the police academy. All right, so then they all get together. Congrats, hugs. Let's have a toast. Some of you know where this is going. They have the toast. And then um, fast forward a few hours, uh, Chasen's truck is, is uh, well, there's other motorists calling saying, yeah, there's a guy. And first he's in the right lane and then he's going into the median. He pops a wheelie, he's back on the road. He goes on the sidewalk. He hits a street sign, hits a goddamn fire hydrant, hits a car. He's, this fucker is all over the place. Somebody come stop him. They, they stop him and it's this asshole. He, he has a party to graduate from the police academy. And then the stupid dick gets shit faced and gets bop for a Dewey. Former pitcher told the cops he only had a couple of beers. As soon as the cops hear that, they go, that could mean anything. It's, but it's not two. It's anything but two. If you say a couple beers, the cop says, so two. And then the guy usually will say, oh, a few. So three or more. Because that's what a few is. Three or more. Eventually confessed to five or six. Uh, During the field sobriety test. And by the way, these are all people that he knows that pull him over. They're like, ah, God damn it. He blew a .104. So he wasn't ridiculous. But took two more when he arrived at the police station uh, station and uh, showed .09 and uh, and then a .098. So he wasn't blathering, you know. He's drunk, shouldn't be operating a motor vehicle, but that's not going to take. It's just the timing of this, you dumbass. God damn it. Uh, the city of Henderson, Nevada, had hired him. On September 23rd, 
Um, and then, you know, so then he you know, is part of, he had been associated with that, uh, with Henderson and then became the cadet, all that shit. That's all part of it. And then it's time to be a full on cop. They had to fire him immediately. My God, what an idiot. What do you do then at that point? All that time and energy and on the day that you graduate from cop school, you get pulled over for drunk driving. After you spend all this time trying to become a cop, you finally get there and then you, you, you're right there. Nobody learns. Nobody learns their lesson. Holy shit. So there you go. That could be your asshole of the day. If it wasn't for Stu McAllister. It started out, it was eas- easily Ashley as the asshole of the day. And then it went to Stu McAllister. It tried to be this guy, but it's not. It's going to be Stu McAllister. That will be your asshole of the day. We have a paintball event coming up on the 28th of April. That is paintball war number 24. The April assault. Uh, I'm sorry. The April aggression is what we're calling it. I'd love you to be there. Reach out to me, Eric at EricZaneShow.com on the Shoreliner striping inbox. If you want to participate, otherwise book your own event at TC paintball online at TC paintball GR.com. Thank you to Frank Fuss from My Policy Shop Insurance. No matter where you are in the U.S., I'm sorry, not in Japan, sumo. Uh, sign up for insurance, either your healthcare, healthcare.gov, uh, perhaps life insurance. Maybe you're getting ready to take advantage of Medicare. These are all things that uh, Frank can help you with. Set up all your social security ins and outs. Frank can help. Go to buyinsurancehere.com for more information. That will set you up with uh, getting a face-to-face with Frank, and he can help you every step of the way. We've got A and E, heating and cooling. My Mexican brother, the immortal Joe Martinez. Boy, viewers are way down today. What is up with that? Joe is here, though. It might have had something to do with uh, kicking people out early. Thank you, Joe, for being part of the Eric Zane Show podcast. Call Joe at 616 616- 516-8579 to schedule your AC tune-up today. Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV. If your vehicle needs maintenance, call Irvine's. 616-532-6600 or check out their website, irvines.com. Make it a point to support the sponsors, my wonderful partners that help support this show. Thank you to them. Last but not least, If you like to burn, smoke cannabis, get high, get stoned, whatever. Get your cannabis from Green Medicine Shop. Now, I know you're like, EZ, why do we need to go to a medicinal facility? Michigan is legal for recreational. Well, that's because this is my sponsor, and they have a medicinal facility. Because the locals there say they've got an ordinance that says you can't sell recreational. So they got the business up and running. Now, eventually, they'll be able to sell it recreationally as well as medicinally. There are some distinct advantages, though, to selling it and consuming medicinal marijuana. First of all, no 10% excise tax. Second of all, uh, less yeast, less mold. Third of all, if you're under 21, you can get your medicinal marijuana with your med card. 18 to, uh, 18 to 21 are welcome if you have your card. How do you get your card? You go to their website, thegreenmedicineshop.com, fill out the form, It'll set you back 90 bucks, but you get a $100 in-store credit when you buy from their website. Your, or I should say get your uh, med card through their website. So they got everything covered, and you're helping out a great local sponsor in the wonderful community of Greenville, Michigan. Check out their website, thegreenmedicineshop.com. Today's asshole of the day, it was Forey J. Smith from the show Yellowstone. Yellowstone, is that what that's called? Yesterday, that was your asshole of the day. Today, as I said, I, I stand by it. It's Stu McAllister for screaming at his poor dog. You can't do that to a dog. The dog didn't know. You dumbass. That's your asshole of the day brought to you by TC Paintball. Go fuck yourself, Stu. Don't scream at your dog like that, you dumb dick. That's the way it is. 
Uh, that's it. The show is now done. Chris says he can't wait for Patreon today. Oh, yeah. Sumo's fitting right in. Fucking dick, Stu. Um, Sumo, so what you do is um, right now, go to patreon.com slash Eric Zane and sign up for the seven days free. So you put in a payment form and then immediately cancel it after. Or wait, I don't care. I say that because if the seven days expires, it charges you the five or 10 bucks a month. I do this for people who are new to get a free trial of what I do on Patreon. Monday through Friday, I do a second podcast, 30, 40 minutes. And there's all sorts of other content on there, which you will get caught up on over time. So try out the seven days free. So I want my phone to say, hey, you got a new person, seven days free. It's real easy. Patreon.com, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash Eric Zane. Sign up for seven days free. Cancel it after. And then if seven days passes, you still like it, then you can sign up. And then we, you know, now we're talking turkey. Then we've got, then we're in the jackpot. All right. Otherwise, welcome. I'm glad I have a new audience member. I see that you followed me on Twitch so you know when I'll go live. That is my time today. Linda's got a meeting at 1230, so I'll get after it right away so she can catch this. Oh, shit. She can catch my story. Thank you for checking this out. I'll talk to you in a handful of minutes. Till then, bye-bye.